Hello everybody, welcome. Hope you're ready to flex those brains. Today we're looking at some trinomials and we're looking at how to factor them. So a trinomial, first of all, what is a trinomial? It's basically a polynomial with three terms. So it's a specific type of polynomial. And it looks like this usually, of this form. So A is just a constant times X squared, B is a constant times X, and then C is a constant. So it's a specific type of polynomial. So we have some different cases. First of all, why do we need to factor these? Well, we'll see that later on, but in order to solve these, you have to factor them. A lot of times you have to factor them to simplify, to cancel things out if you have like rational expressions, stuff like that. So you do use factoring a lot throughout math. So we'll get to that. Let's see, so case one, this is my way of factoring. Case one, if A equals one, right? In other words, if this is one, then this is the most simple case of, of factoring. And you just use this multiply add method, which I'll talk about in just a second. So case two, A is not equal to one. So A is two, five, 10, any, anything other than one, right? The first thing you always do is look for a greatest common factor. Because what happens a lot is you have a common factor between these three terms. You can factor that out. And then what's left oftentimes is a simple case. And we'll see an example. If that doesn't make sense, it's okay. We'll see an example. Uh, and then if you can't find a greatest common factor, then you use the AC method or the X method. I think these are the two methods that are most often taught um, today. So I'll make probably a separate video on each of these. They're pretty similar, but a little bit different. So let's go ahead and get to our first example. So we are asked to factor this trinomial. As we can see, it is a trinomial. It has three terms. And in this case, it's of this form where a equals one. So it follows that case one that we talked about in the beginning of this video where a equals one. So what we can do is we can just factor it using that multiply add method. And what that means is we're looking for two things that multiply together to be negative three and add together to be positive two. So in general terms, we're looking for two things that multiply together to be C and add together to be B. So that's generally what we're gonna do when we have a trinomial where A equals one and we're asked to factor it. We're gonna use this method. So what we're actually doing when we're factoring this is we're rewriting it as a product of two binomials. So we're rewriting this as the product of two binomials. So you're always gonna have an X and an X. You're always gonna have X and X when A is one because this times this, that will give you that first term. These are always gonna be X's when A is one. So now all you have to do is fill in these blanks. And that's where we use that multiply add method. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the three here. And I'm gonna write all the th numbers that multiply together to get three. So in this case, it's only three and one. So this is a very simple case. So three and one. So what I'm looking to do is arrange these in a way where they multiply together to be negative three and add together to be positive two. So what I'm gonna end up having is plus three minus one. Plus three minus one, that will give me my positive two. And if I multiply them, I'll get my negative three. So what, am I what, what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these spots with plus three and minus one. Sorry, that's pretty bad, plus three. All right, so I've taken this trinomial and I've rewrote it as a product of two binomials and it is now fully factored. So let's go ahead and do one more example. All right, here's our second example. So in this case, we're asked to factor this trinomial. But as you can see with this trinomial, A is not equal to one. So it's not that case one. We actually have that case two. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, when we have that case two, the first thing we do is the first thing we always do is we look to see if there's a common factor. We look for a greatest common factor between these three terms. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to factor that out. We're looking to pull that out in front. And what's gonna be left here in parentheses is whatever's left when we basically divide each term by that common factor. So by looking at this, I could tell that they're all even numbers. So I can definitely pull out a two. And in fact, that's gonna end up being the greatest common factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that two out. 
And what I'm left with here, like I said, is just each term divided by two. So here's gonna be x squared minus x minus six, and that's what's left. So now we're to this point, we've pulled out a two, that's the greatest common factor, we've pulled that out. But look what we're left with, right? We're left with a two, and then here we have a trinomial, but this time it's a trinomial where a does equal one. And this is the reason why we always look for a greatest common factor when we're given these kind of problems where a does not equal one. Because a lot of times when you do have a common factor, you can pull it out and you're left with something where a does equal one. Now we can use that case one to factor this, right? Now we can just do the multiply add method to this. We're gonna factor this and then that's the fully factored uh, version of this whole thing here, right? So we're looking for two things that multiply together to give us negative six and add together to give us negative one. So let's go ahead and write out the factors of six here. Let's see, six. We have what, six times one and three times two. All right, so we can probably see that six and one aren't gonna work because that's gonna give us, let's see, if we have plus six minus one, minus six plus one, neither of those will work, right? But I think the three and two will, and we need to get to minus one here. So I think what's gonna end up working is minus three plus two. That's gonna give us that minus one that we need right here. So these are gonna end up being the numbers that are inside these parentheses here. So I have x's here as always. When the a is one, you can just go ahead and write x's here. And then, yeah, it's gonna be minus three plus two. Pretty straightforward, and that is the fully factored version of this, right? And if we wanna check our answer, what can we do? Well, we can FOIL everything out. So first I would FOIL this out, and you get from here back up to here, and then you distribute this two back in, and you get from here back up to here, and you can check your answer. I always recommend checking your answer, unless time is of the essence. If you're on an exam, maybe wait till the very end and then go back and check it. But it's always a good idea to check your answer, especially when you're still, still learning this, so. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, stuff like that, leave it below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.